Hello Africa, hello the world, and welcome to this new edition of your program on Africa TV, the Pan-African television that builds Africa. In a moment, we will immerse you in Pan-Africanism and independence of Africa. What result century, a century later? It is a question of taking stock of Pan-Africanism as conceived by the founding fathers and whose immediate objective was Africa's independence and solidarity among peoples. A century later, is Africa independent? Is solidarity between peoples effective? Has there been any progress despite this? What didn't work? Have the head state and government and Pan-African organizations failed? Can we, a century later, keep hope that Africa will be independent? What needs to be done to achieve this? Do we need a precursor, a charismatic leader, political will, how can we effectively remobilize the troops? These are some of the questions that will be guide our discuss discussion with our guest. Hello, Mr. Edmond Piatin. Hello, Mario Louis. Good morning. Thanks for inviting me for this uh, program on the Africa TV. Thank you for honoring us with your presence in this broadcast, Pan Africanist 101. Thank you. You are economics? Of course, yes, I am. Okay. From my background, I'm an economist. Okay. Yeah. Question. A century later, is Africa independent? Well, um, first of all, I would like us to uh, kind of make a difference between, uh, because when we say is Africa independent, it's kind of uh, we uh, uh, have in Africa as a whole country. Africa is not a single country. And then Africa hasn't got the uh, uh, same influence, you know, when we talk of uh, 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 coloni colonization, we've got several influences from French, from uh, uh, Italy, from, uh, 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 from the UK and so on. So today, if we are asking if Africa is really independent, I would like to say some, as some um, African country uh, uh, independent and I would like to say that uh, most of the former British uh, colonies we can say they are independent because we can see them um, taking care of their activities we can see them managing their own affairs be it political econo uh, economic uh, so cultural and everything but when we come to French speaking uh, uh, African countries, that is former French uh, colonies, that is where the problem is. Can we say former French colonies are independent? And to answer that question, I would like to be to peremptorily say no, we are not independent. Sometimes when we talk of independence, some people try to, to bring confusion in between independence and interaction in between states. And people want to say no, no country is really independent, but I would like to say this is countries are independent but no uh, country can live closely you know we have all the countries have interferences of other countries because you don't you you know you don't, you, you, you you have you need the support of other countries to live you, you need to exchange what we call uh, bilateral and multilateral relationship but when it comes to french former colonies we see they are not independent because most of their political affairs, most of their economic affairs, most of their cultural affairs, most even in their education, everything has been decided abroad. And when we say abroad, it's been decided in Paris by the French authorities. Yes. So today we can peremptorily say our fr former French speaking colonies are not independent, they still have to fight for their independence. They still have to because today um, uh, 
I will not if I will if, I will not exaggerate if I say that uh, France is still deciding who is going to be uh, president in most of these countries, in most of these former colonies. So uh, only uh, based on based upon this, we cannot say that uh, African countries are independent. Instead, I think they still have a long way to go. They still have a long fight to fight for their independence. Okay, thank you. Is solidarity between peoples effective? <sighs> Is solidarity between people effective? Well, um, let go on, uh, on facts. Today, uh, I would like to take only the, uh, the sub-region uh, Semak, which is made of, out of six countries, Cameroon, Gabon, and... Uh, 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 yeah, Cameroon, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, Chad. Uh, Chad, Congo, and Central Republic of Central uh, Africa. Central Republic of Africa. Only these nations. If you see the way they are living, you will really ask. The, you have the answer to your question: Is there solidarity between uh, between people? We have a current fact, which is the war going on in Cameroon, the southwest and northwest region of Cameroon. You know, this is something that could be a call for concern for most of our neighbors, Chad and Gabon and so on. They could have kind of tried to be, a, uh, I mean, to play the role of referee in between the Cameroon government and the separatists. You know, because we have the same sub-region that we call CEMAC. So why is it not possible for the president of Chad, Congo, Equatorial Guinea to kind of play the role of mediation in between the Cameroon government and the separatists to try and to, to bring peace in the Cameroon. It is not possible. It's like everybody is just taking care of his personal affair. Nobody is really interested in what is going on in, his, in the neighboring country. You know, it is, it is none of other's business. It is Cameroon problem. And it, I'm, I'm not saying this to blame other countries because it has been the same. Whenever there is a problem in Chad or Congo or Gabon, uh, you know, Cameroon will not react. It will not. Uh, it will not be a concern for Cameroon, and it will not be a concern for other uh, uh, countries. Most of the time, when there is a problem in Africa, you will see that the solution will come from abroad. Like for now in Cameroon, you have seen uh, uh, Mr. Tagi Nabor coming from the United States. Mm -hmm. You've seen people coming from Europe. The only voice we've been hearing so far, so far, is either coming from Europe or from the United States. And there's no voice coming from Africa. So how can we say that there is solidarity between people when uh, among Africa themselves cannot sit down and look for solutions over their problems? So to me, I will not say that there is solidarity between people today based on the fact we got, even within the same nation, if you see in Cameroon, for instance, today, why are we fighting against ourselves? We're trying, the, the war in Cameroon, for instance, today in the uh, southwest and northwest region is simply because people want to keep themselves from Cameroon. They don't want to be part of Cameroon anymore. They think that the association, uh, I mean, decided by the, uh, by the forefathers was a wrong one, was not a good one. So they want to separate, they want to cut themselves from Cameroon simply because they think they have been ostracized, they've been marginalized, um, they don't have, uh, they have not been considered, uh, they have been deceived, and their right has never been respected in the association they got with, with the Rara Republic to Cameroon. So, you know, and it just, some few months uh, uh, before the uh, uh, before the uh, presidential elections, we've seen how tribalism has been going viral. You know, people like a, an ethnic group does not want to see the other ethnic groups and things mm -hmm. like that. So today there is a long, there is a real job to be done. I think to kind of bring people together for people to understand that I cannot live without my brother and my brother cannot live without me. We need to come together. We need to go hand in to hand. Mm -hmm. If at all we got to fight imperialism, if at, all, if at all we got to fight the enemy coming from from uh, from abroad. So we get, we need to really stand together if we want to fight, uh, uh, I mean, 
all the influences coming from abroad but today is not the case so uh, based upon this fact uh, we cannot really say there's solidarity between uh, our people in africa okay. has there been any progress <clears throat> despite this well progress in terms of if you go back to the ideas of the uh, i mean uh, 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 founded fathers, I mean to Kwame Nkrumah and uh, Kwame Nkrumah, Marcus Garvey, Dubois and all and the rest. Well has has they I been have also uh, Edouard Widmot. Yeah, yeah, all of them, Pat Mott, uh, all of them, all these founding fathers of the Pan Africanism, uh, or is has there been any progress? For some time, let's say the concept has been a bit slumbering, drossy, and uh, uh, we have some leaders like Muammar Gaddafi who has played a key role to try to, uh, uh, you know, try to uh, uh, re-update the concept. But uh, in terms of progress, because Pan-Africanism was set up mainly to bring Africans together, to fight for the independence of African countries, to bring more solidarity between Africans. But today, what are we seeing? Most of the African countries are not, are not independent. There is no solidarity between Africans. Africans are not living peacefully in their, in, in their countries. So uh, the result so far is not what uh, was expected from the founding fathers of Pan-Africanism. So, I will be a bit, I will not, I don't want to exaggerate to say that the progress has been very mitigated, very, very mitigated. Uh, you know, the results so far has been very, they have been very mitigated. So progress in terms of uh, uh, the target uh, as defined by the founding fathers, no, I don't think there have been so much progress. No, not, not really. Progress because some uh, uh, some uh, African countries succeeded in really achieving their independence. Yes, we've got some good uh, some some good numbers. So I mean, quite a good numbers of African countries that actually succeeded in achieving their independence. Ghana, for instance. I mean, most of these former British colonies, Ghana, uh, Nigeria. Nigeria, and uh, you know other countries, and most of the West African countries like Ethiopia, Kenya, and so far, they are doing good. They are doing. In that regard, we can say, yeah, there have been some progress. Some people have really succeeded in doing something with the. Uh, so there are some progress, but still more need to be done. More need to be done. Okay. What didn't work? What didn't work along the way, I think, oh, we can, uh, the, the, I think along the way there have been a lot of interferences along the way. Pan-Africanism as defined by the founding fathers like Kwame Nkrumah, like uh, Patmo, like Dubois, uh, was actually like i said to bring africans together but you will see along the way some there was there have been a lot of some people develop a lot of uh, egoistic behaviors a lot of uh, uh, individualism and uh, this has been uh, uh, been this have been with the support and the uh, with the with the full support of some you know, I would, I would like to say some uh, uh, Western countries like France, for instance. If you go back to the 1960s, you will see what happened in between a president like uh, uh, Ofoed Boigny and the other presidents. Ofoed Boigny, Bokassa, those are people who have been used to actually destroy the idea of pan-africanism most of many uh, african leaders well african leaders most african presidents they have really uh, 
play against Pan-Africanism. <clears throat> they have helped to destroy the idea, you know, the substance of Pan-Africanism. So um, everybody wants to stick on, on his power. Everybody wants to conserve his own power. Nobody wants to take care of what is going on in the neighboring country. And um, like I said, France has played a very a key role. Like, you know, they have all the uh, leaders who were really, who really wanted to develop the concept of Pan-Africanism, they have been killed. Like Modibo Keita, for instance, in Mali, he has been killed with the support of France. Like uh, Olympio in uh, Togo, he has been killed with the support of France. Uh, like Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso, he has also been killed with the support of France. Uh, I will name a good number of them. Yes. There are many like of Patrice them. Lumumba. Like Patrice Lumumba, he has been killed. And all these guys, these presidents, are the people who actually wanted to really conserve the real idea of Pan Africanism. <clears throat> so when they when they succeeded in killing these people, I think others become afraid, become scared, and they said, I don't want the same thing to happen to me. Yes. And then they said, no, we do not want to defend them. I guess. So that's why I said, uh, for some time, for, for some time, the concept has been uh, uh, slumbery, sleepy, and uh, well, it's only uh, some years ago that we tried to revitalize this the concept again, and we are talking about it again. Have the head of state and government, Pan-African organization failed? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I don't, shall we say some the head of state have they failed? Definitely they have failed. Because I think even if they were just afraid, if, if even if they were scared uh, because of what happened to others, if you are a leader, should you be afraid? Should you be scared? So it is your responsibility. So they have failed. And uh, most of the uh, uh, Pan African organizations, like, uh, you know, there were, made, there were quite a good number of them, they have also failed because they, step, they stopped the idea of expanding the concept. They should not expand the concept. Most of the problem we have in Africa is that um, uh, young Africans are not trained enough. They don't receive the substance that will bring them to really fight for their continent. They don't receive that, uh, that, 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 that training. So they are fair in training Africans. They are fair in expanding the concept to, order to the young uh, generation. They are fair to defend the, you know, the, the, uh, the substantial idea of Pan-Africanism. The, the pillars of the, of the concept, they are fair to defend them. So uh, definitely, yeah, they have been a failure on the head of states and the Pan-African organization. They bear a good, uh, a quite a good responsibility in, the, in this failure. Yes, they have failed. Can we a century later keep hope that Africa will be independent? Like I said, or some African countries are already independent. I think the question here is, can we keep hope that uh, those who are not yet independent will be? Yes, yes, I have that hope. Because uh, if you see what, what happened in, you know, some uh, things five years ago, you will see that the idea of Pan-Africanism has been revitalized you know people are still you know today people are fighting you see what is happening now in the countries you see mr omar el bashir who is was one of the very tough guy he fell yesterday he mm -hmm. stepped down yesterday yeah. and then before omar el bashir uh, mr uh, the president Abdulaziz uh, of algeria he also stepped down uh, all this was uh, due to the you know power of the people who really uh, you know they stood up and said we don't want this we don't want that so uh, uh, it is if we could concentrate if the people of africa could concentrate this energy to actually uh, 
fight the imperialism because that is why I always said and sometimes people wonder why I personally Edmund I do not get involved it's in some political activities I'm not a member of any particular uh, political party in Cameroon because I simply tell them look I'm not interested because uh, what we do now is not the right is not the right battle you know trying to chase mr. Uh, Bia, for instance, to replace him by uh, somebody else will not help the situation because the person that will come, if the configuration is the same, he will have the same problem, he will face the same difficulties Mr. Bia faced. And you see what is going on now in Sudan, for instance, people succeeded in bringing Mr. Um, Omar El Bashi to step down. But you see what's happened. Now the military have, they have, they have decided to take control for two years. And, no, and only God knows if after two years they will decide they will step down. Maybe they will take control forever because that is the same thing Mr. Omar El Bashi did in 1989 when he became, after the, the, after the coup d'etat he made, he became president in 1989 and he said he's going to lead the transition. For four years, but after four years, he decided to become president, and he has been president for 30 years. So, problem is, uh, we have to know what is the real battle. Actually, in French-speaking Africa today, the battle is not to replace a president, but the battle is to chase away the interference of the of the. Of France in our affairs because as long as they will keep on interfering in our affairs you can replace 10 20 hundred presidents if the configuration the political configuration is the same they will face the same problem and the situation will still be the same so that is why I always tell my people look uh, the, we don't want to just undress St. Paul and dress up St. John it's not what we are looking for because if you replace Mr. Bia in Yaoundé by, let's say, Kamto, and Kamto is still facing the same problem that Mr. Bia is facing now with France, he will have the same difficulties and definitely he will not be able to give the people of Cameroon the good life they are looking for because what is actually the problem in in our countries that we should be able to exploit our natural resources to ex we should be able to exploit all the natural potential that we got we got a lot of natural potentials and we should be able to exploit it and give our citizens a better life condition a good life standard that is what we are looking for but as long as france will be there to interfere in our problems to decide who is going to do what to decide what are uh, what is going to be explored what quantity of what we should do. no as long as they are there to make all these decisions i don't think uh, be who is the president will be the problem the problem is not who is the president it could be mr bi it could be mr kamto it could be mr frundi it could be myself edmund but i know that if you send me now to a 2d with all the goodwill i got with if you send me to a 2d now in this configuration don't expect anything from me Two days later, you will be disappointed and you will not recognize me because I will manage it. I will either I will be killed because I've decided not to follow what they are saying, or I will follow what they are saying and then I will not be able to give you what you what you expect from me. This life standard you expect from me. So that is the problem we have to fight in Africa. That is our main fight now to make sure we come out from this uh, from this yoke. Uh, uh, from this French yoke, we come out from this French yoke and then we take our destiny into our hands. We have our independence economically, uh, politically, culturally. If we have all this, then I can tell you uh, within just a couple of years, we will be able to give our citizens a good life standard that they, they deserve. What needs to be done to achieve this? What need to be done to achieve this? I think, uh, uh, like I said, we have to train our people first. We have to train to train the new generation. We have to let them know where the battle is because today, 
many people don't know actually what is going on we have to feed our people with real information with accurate information if you keep on telling them that our leaders are our enemies yet they, yes they are our enemies but not because they want to be our enemies because they have been transformed into our enemies it's just like you have a, you have a, a, a security guy in your house and then you realize that this security guy is working against you and he's the one giving the opportunity to thieves to come and steal what you get at home if you already know that stop calling him security my security guy he's no longer your security guy the yeah. same i'm saying our leaders are not longer our leaders because they are not working for our good so it it, it it is good to tell our young people not to be distracted and they should have the accurate information to actually know where our problem is and they should fight the real fight that is our problem if we don't understand that uh, the problem is our independence we will keep saying uh, Mr. Bia is the problem. Then we will replace Mr. Bia by somebody else, and somebody else will come and do the same thing because he will be he will find himself in the same situation, and we will still be disappointed, and we will be doing the same thing again and again. And I think Mr. Einstein said, insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expect to have a different result, which is which is being insane. I don't want to be insane. That is why I'm saying. We have to fight the real battle, the good fight, and the good fight to me is the, is the fight for our independence and for our freedom. Do we need a precursor, a charismatic leader, a political will? Yeah, we, uh, a charismatic leader, of course. I think uh, we've got one. We've got some good charismatic leaders in Africa. Let nobody uh, tell you the contrary. Sankara was one. Lumumba was one. He was very charismatic. Sankara was one too. And even in Cameroon, we've got some very charismatic leaders. Unyobe was one. Enes Wangi was one. And uh, Felix, Mounier. Felix Mounier, he was one too. At the whole of Africa, we've got very charismatic leaders. And today, we still need one. Yes, we still need people who understand what the target is. We still need people who say this is the this is the way to go. This is where we gotta go. Because tough things, some people said Mr. Obama came here and say oh, we don't need tough guys. We all we need tough institutions. But tough tough institutions can only be put in place by tough people. If you want strong institution. You also need strong people to be able to build up strong things. So I think we need charismatic leaders. We need people who understand what the problem is and where the problem is. And we need people actually with good will because you can be charismatic and you don't put it at the service of your own people of your own country you can be charismatic and you put it at disposal of strangers then you are not doing any good you can be charismatic and you lack the will of doing things so that is why yes we need charismatic people with very good will to implement good things in africa yes we we do need them and uh, uh but how do we get charismatic people if they are not trained if we don't train the, the i mean if we don't train our people if we don't feed them with accurate information to tell them where the problem is what is to be done so yes we need to train the young generation we need to tell them exactly where the problem is then we we'll have some charismatic leaders will emerge with real information, with the good will to actually change the whole situation. The last question. Yeah. How can we effectively mobilize the troops? 
Yes, how can we effectively mobilize our the troops? Um, we have to sensibilize them. We have to use all the tools at our disposal to give out information there. I mean, young men in our town, young men in our village, young men in the rural areas, young men all over, they need to, to receive the the, to be to, to be sensibilized to know what is going on and to understand that the destiny of our country of our continent can only be taken into our hands and by nobody else because the mistake today people are making people make a lot of mistakes by thinking that the messiah will come from somewhere else the messiah will come from the united states the messiah will come from france the messiah will come from europe from from uk no it doesn't exist you only are the messiah of your own people if Cameroon has a problem, the solution needs to come from, 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 from Cameroon and by Cameroonians. That's what we have to let people understand. I think one of the problems today is that we distracted a lot with a lot of, you know, negative things we distracted. We don't, you know, we don't, we don't really concentrate. We don't focus on the, on the real problems. We don't focus on the real problem. We distracted a lot. So today I think we need to really send out there the real information. And thanks, we have some good technologies today. People over on their phones can receive information. But one of the problems I'm saying we are distracted, if you go on social media, for instance, you see the type of information people are sharing there. Uh, people tend to appreciate more, I mean, you know, you know, common things that the real information nobody's going on the social media and a few, just some few people are going on the social media to actually you know expand some ideas some good ideas but majority of people on social media and god only knows that 80 percent of people on social media are, are, are young people but they go on social media actually to distract themselves to you know create birds to get some you know just to you know to expand some you know negative ideas and so on that's why they are rid of fake news coming from social medias and it, it's become kind of nasty tools so the problem is they have to know, we have to know how to use some of these tools like you know smartphones and so on all the support that we can use to actually expand some the, the, the information we have to make good use of them so that our people should be sensibilized people should know what is going on they should receive the information they should know why we are suffering they should understand why we are most of the richest continents and we are but we the more most uh, i mean uh, poor people miserable people in the world which is a contrast you can have we cannot have the continent which is the richest continent in the world and we have the most miserable people in the world is is a contrast so people have to understand what is the problem and then they should focus on this problem once they have the real information once people know what is going on once people know what is actually uh, in, in, uh, the impediment of their welfare of their well-being then they will be tend to actually uh, stand up and fight fight for their right fight for the uh, to get the solution to their problems so uh, uh, a little job has been has been done so far but still more need to be done thank you one more time mr edmond Piate, for being here thank you also it's my pleasure it was a great pleasure to exchange and share with you thank you and with Africa TV viewers about Pan Africanism and African independence. Thank you. I invite you to another edition in two weeks. Okay. Bye. Thank you.